worship for April 26, 2020. As we're looking at, uh, as we're looking at our worship together today, uh, this is Saturday morning. I'm taping it, so whenever you're watching it, it's fine. We are a church that we all we cannot meet physically, spiritually. We are still a kin in life. So Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. If you want to, if you're following the order of worship that's been published, you might want to pause and listen to some music or sing along to the ones you know. Okay, uh, as we take a few moments to pray, let's pray and ask God to fill this time that we share together uh, with His Spirit and His presence. Let's pray. Father, we're grateful and thankful that You are God, that You are with us uh, every step of the way. Uh, we see the beauty of the world that You have created around us. No matter what's going on in our lives, Father, You, you have painted so many beautiful sunrises and and just to let us know that you are faithful and you are with us. And so this morning as we worship together that uh, you would speak to our hearts and our lives and help us to know that you are the same Lord uh, that was crucified, risen, and, and coming again. And Father, that we have that hope. So speak to us this morning as we worship. In the name of Christ we pray. Amen. If you're following the order, you might want to pause, and I'll share some in a separate tape. I will, uh, in a separate link, we'll share our phrases and our concerns. Okay, um, now let me read some scripture for us that uh, we might uh, think about today. Uh, out of the uh, Psalms, I've been kind of leaning on the Psalms because Psalms are those hymns that the Jewish folks had that. Uh, this was their hymn book, and they shared and, and, and spoke to God and felt his comfort. A familiar one today, Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me, your rod and your staff that comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Our New Testament reading out of the life of Christ, uh, we're turning to Luke chapter 23, going back and picking up some of the things that were happening in Jesus' life uh, as he was marching toward the cross. And one of the things that Christ did in the cross is he reconciled, um, our, he reconciled us to himself, but in the process he's also rec rec reconciling us to each other. And so, uh, a little, because we, I'm all through Lent, we kind of focus on the things that are happening in Jesus. This is just a little side note here, uh, beginning with verse 6. On hearing this, that is, is that uh, Jesus had come from Galilee. If he, he asked if he was a Galilean. When he learned that Jesus was under Herod's jurisdiction, he sent him to Herod, who was also in Jerusalem at that time. When Herod saw Jesus, he was greatly pleased, because for a long time he had been wanting to see him. From what he had seen and heard about him, he hoped to see him perform a sign of some sort. He piled him with many questions, but Jesus gave him no answer. The chief priests and the teachers of the law were standing there vehemently accusing him. Then Herod and his soldiers ridiculed and mocked him, dressing him in an elegant robe. They sent him back to Pilate. That day, Herod and Pilate became friends. Before this, they had been enemies. Then Pilate called together the chief priests, the rulers of the people, and said to them, You brought me this man as one who is inciting the people to rebellion. I have examined him in your presence and have found no basis for your charges against him. Neither has Herod, for he has sent him back. 
death to us. As you can see, he has done nothing to deserve death. Therefore, I will punish him and release him. May the Lord add understanding to his word today as we share together in the name of Christ. Amen. If you're following our order of service, you might want to pause for uh, a couple songs to sing along or uh, just enjoy. And, and then you also might want to look at the link uh, for our children's sermon, which uh, many people have said over the years that it makes more sense of the sermon after they see the children's sermon than, than without it. So take a moment and listen to some music and maybe enjoy the children's message. Now, as we look at the text this morning, as we look at what Jesus is doing, I, I want to focus on a couple of things here uh, that, that we have. This is that Pilate and Herod had been enemies, but somehow Jesus brought them together. By his very presence, by his work in their life, he has brought them together. They were at distance from each other. Uh, social distance, political difference, distance, uh, spiritual distance. There is all sorts of distance between Herod and Pilate. So we kind of get the inclination from the text, implication from the text that, that while Herod was in Jerusalem that time, they didn't talk to each other. You know how that is. I, I remember one time when I had a hard time forgiving someone, uh, uh, for something they had done. And uh, I remember seeing them cross the street. And I thought, good, they're on the other side of the street. I don't have to talk to them. But then the Lord kind of nudged me and said, no, we've been talking about you forgiving them. You need to go and speak to them and let them know that you still care for them and love them. Uh, didn't ask for an apology, so I, I just I went across the street and, and said hi to an old, old pressure of mine that had, um, that had offended me. But the Lord told me not to keep the offense. Jesus took the offense. He, he carried that. I'm not going to have to carry that. And, and, and that frees me. And so I was able to go over and ask how they were doing and, and share with them. And, and it just created... It, it dropped the barriers so that I could be in connection with them. And so as we look at uh, the, the fact that we can have spiritual distance, and, and sometimes that's more deadly than social distancing. Uh, I see everybody's creative in how they overcome social distancing. I was doing my walk the other day, and, and there in the parking lot down at Asbury Woods was three minivans with all the moms sitting in the back of their minivans talking with each other. Uh, parking lots are great places to maintain social distance and yet connect with each other. And, and, and so they did that because we have a need and a desire to come together and to be close, but especially close to Jesus. Let's pray. Father, as we hear your word this morning, let us hear what you have to say to us. In the name of Christ, we pray. Amen. So, the first thing that brought Herod and Pilate together was that they had a common interest. They had a common point that they were looking at, and that was Jesus. Pilate didn't know what to do with Jesus. He knew that the Jews had set Jesus up because they were angry with him, because uh, they, they didn't like Jesus, and they wanted to get rid of him. And Herod had been wanting to see Jesus a long time because Herod had a falling out with John the Baptist and, 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 uh, and wanted, heard all these things about Jesus doing miracles. And at some point, he was thinking that, wow, here is Jesus. He's doing all these miracles. Maybe I can see it. Maybe, maybe I can see some miracle from him. Because at one time, uh, Herod thought that uh, Jesus was maybe John the Baptist raised from the dead to torment him. And so he had been interested in Jesus for some time. And Pilate had this man that was innocent on his hands, but he, he thought maybe if Herod could find something wrong with him, he would feel a whole lot better about condemning Jesus to death. And so they had a common point. 
They had a common point that they were both looking at. And so that starts to bring us together. When we have a common point, when we begin to look at Jesus and see what, uh, see what he's doing in our lives, then uh, that draws us to him and to each other. One of the things that, that developed out of this relationship that we have in Peter, uh, he says uh, that before this they had been enemies. And Herod, Herod and Pilate became friends. Why? Because Pilate honored Herod. Even though he didn't like him necessarily, even though they were maybe politically uh, kind of juggling for the same spots or whatever going on in their life, they were, uh, they were indeed uh, at odds with each other, but overlapping jurisdictions. And Pilate humbled himself. And that's what it takes for us uh, to, to mend relationships and to mend the relationships that are broken. And that's what Jesus did. He humbled himself on the cross to take the burden of our brokenness in our relationship so that we could do what God wants us to do. And so that so Herod humbled himself and sent Jesus over to Herod. Our pilot humbled himself and sent him over to Herod. Ultimately, if we're going to be, if we're going to allow Jesus to conquer our broken relationships, we're going to have to have a common Lord. People, Christians from all over and in all perspectives, start, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. If the Lord is our shepherd, then we have a common Lord. If the Lord is our shepherd, the one that we follow, uh, we, we will, as we draw close to him, we inevitably will draw close to each other. And if we veer away from each other, we can't both be following ourselves to get us to the place where Jesus is our Lord and where we will end up in the, at the same place, at the foot of the cross, at the foot of Jesus. Uh, sometimes we have, have a lot of... Um, um, things that we need to uh, mend. And Jesus will do that for us if we will humble ourselves and seek Him and come to Him. So we need to follow Jesus where He leads us. And sometimes it's where we're more on love than the truth side. Sometimes we're more on the truth and love side. But as we get closer to Jesus, those things together. In, the, in Ephesians, Paul says this about Christ. But now in Christ Jesus, you were once far away, have been brought near by the blood of Christ. For he himself is our peace, who has made the two groups one, has destroyed the barrier, dividing the, the, the dividing wall of hostility. And so, first put your offense on the cross. Let Jesus carry that. You don't need to carry it anymore. Draw close and, and at least recognize the one thing that I do uh, to... to Break those barriers is to say, Lord, teach me to love them because I know you love them. And when we follow Jesus that way, when we love people the way Jesus does, then we know that we are in him and we have him. So bless them as you do that. So listen to a few more songs and hear the benediction. May the God of peace draw us together that we might be one in the bond of the love of the Father, the Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen.